I'm here at Burley Beach on the Gold Coast with Keith Harris. He's a North Sydney Bears legend, former New South Wales player. He also played for Canterbury Bankstown for a couple of seasons. Keith, it's wonderful to see you after so many years of, uh, I haven't seen you for like decades. Yeah, thanks, Jason. It's good to catch up, man. <laughs> and what a beautiful spot. I know you've been up uh, here in the Gold Coast, uh, you know, since the 80s, you know, since after you retired. But uh, just tell us about your life now. You're, you're 68 and uh, I guess you're kind of retired. Uh, sort of semi-retired. I'm doing some contract work. For, I'm, I'm a civil engineer and worked in local government most of my life. So, and doing some contract work for the Gold Coast City Council at present. So. Well, that's great to know. And you know, we're looking here at one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. And I don't, I know you live not far from here in Burley Waters, but let's go back to where it began for you as, as a guy from Tamworth. And I know Ross Warner was a Bears legend from Tamworth. Did that have any connection with you coming down to play for Norts? Oh, it didn't, but it, there was a sort of a connection between the North Tamworth Bears and the North, Tam, uh, North Sydney Bears. And uh, that was sort of a, a progression there. But the, I was just fortunate, I suppose, that when I came to Sydney, I stayed at McMahon's Point. And uh, the local football team naturally of go and play for the local football team, which was, which was North Sydney. So. so it wasn't even McMahon's Point that you played for. You actually was signed up by Acker Forbes to play for the President's Cup of North Sydney. You didn't even know it was a rep team, did you? No, that's right. No, well, I, well, I rang up being a, a you know, well, I suppose, a dumb country boy, but uh, they uh, rang Acker and he said go to training at President's Cup. And I lobbed there, not realising it was a uh, rep team and just had to explain that I'd come from the country and they, they gave me a trial and uh, you know, I went pretty well in the trial. So they then explained how it all worked and I qualified by playing for uh, Lane Cove for three games and uh, got, so I qualified for President's Cup. Yeah, that was why you were North Junior. I always was wondering, you know, that you're a country boy, but you always uh, qualified as a North Junior. So, you know, I know it was 1971, you were 17, you went back to the bush to play for a while in, in, in between and then you came back and I guess the first time you played first grade for North City was in 1973, right? Yeah, no, 73, because I, I went 71, 72, I did the sort of played President's Cup, then went back to the country and played President's Cup, went back to the country. And, and when I came down in 73, they said, no, 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 we're going to grade you straight away. So, so I went straight into grade. And what I did then was at the end of my, I was doing a sandwich course in engineering, which finished six months uh, at the uh, end of the financial year. And so I used to take my annual holiday so I could finish the football season in Sydney before I went back up the country. So. Right, and what do you remember about those early years, those first two years you had at Norse before you went to Canterbury, 73, 74, what was the team like then? And who were, they? obviously it was, uh, you know, Ross Warner and George Ambram, Ken Irvine, I guess was around then too. No, Kenny had gone to Manly. So I played against Kenny, but didn't play uh, with him. But no, Timmy Pickup and Keith Houghton and Derek Moritz and Owen O'Donnell and Laurie Morassi and, uh, Georgie Ambram was there and um, uh, yeah, Rossi was there. And actually there was, uh, I remember one game we played, there was, uh, I think four, four Tamworth guys in the pack. There was uh, myself, Ross Warner, um, Steve Winter and Mick Colton. Wow, that's yeah, a big yeah, representation, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there was just one game where all four of us from Tamworth played in the, in the North Sydney first grade pack. So. And I remember 74 was a pretty good year because I think North went very close to making the semis, right? We did, yeah. No, we, I think we had to win our last game against South and they, they beat us and we missed out on the semis. So. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, you had two years at Canterbury. How did you, uh, you know, obviously you're an outstanding player. People noticed you. Uh, what were your thoughts about moving to Canterbury for those two seasons? And obviously, it was more frog, wasn't it? Peter Moore. No, actually, it was Tim Pickup because uh, that apparently Timmy had done a deal for us both to go. I, I didn't realise at the time, that, but we, we formed a pretty good combination in those two years at North Sydney. So he was pretty keen to get me to go to Canterbury with him. So he did the deal and then he rang me and told me about the deal. Wow, how would you feel about that? Um, well, <laughs> well, I was pleased that he was thinking of me, but <laughs> and he and it was a, financially it was a good deal as well. So yeah. I bet, and it was a pretty successful time for you at Canterbury because I know that I think in the was it the second season you played in the preliminary final, didn't you, uh, for Canterbury? Yes, yeah. No, and first year we made the the playoffs and we got beaten in the first round and we were straight out. And the yeah second year we made we played Manly in the in the major semi. So. Yeah, and I think Manly won the premiership. Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah, and they beat us by two points. Yeah. And there's also a try on YouTube that people can see that you scored one of the greatest tries of the 70s. You, you know, remember that? 
Well, I do remember it, and it was because I was playing on the wing, and it was not unusual for me to play on the wing. But I didn't believe how much spare time you had out of the wing. So when I got the ball, I was I was pretty fresh and looking for something to do. So yeah, I, think, I thought I better might as well score. Yeah, you had decent pace, didn't you? You were that kind of player that um, you know you were so versatile. You, you, you had decent pace, and you were also reasonable size you know obviously known for you you know your nickname was crash uh and, and you know you crashed people but uh you had decent pace yeah no i did i i was so i fast for a forward <clears throat> and um, you know i could match it with most of the backs as well all right tell us about your return to north uh, because you had those two seasons and then you were back at uh, north uh in, in a time that wasn't that successful but i guess there were high points yeah no well that was sort of the um the bill hamlet bill was coaching when i came back and um and then we went to um, Tommy Bishop and then uh, Chow Hayes and Ron Willey. And yeah, so, so it was varying degrees, but when I first came back, it took us a little while to get some momentum. But once we got, um, you know, coaches like Ron Willey and Chow Hayes, who we started to have a bit more success. Yeah, let's talk about that that time that Ron Willey came in, because it was a horrible season, 1979, that you played in. Norse came last, two, two wins out of, I think, 22 matches. Uh, but something happened when Ron Willey had come in, because he was, a, an accomplished premiership winning coach wasn't he yeah no no ron had a, a different approach he knew the game very well and he, he brought a, some players with him as well so russell hunter came across from from manly and there was some, some other players ross uh roger labitz we ended up buying and yeah so it was a combination of ron's coaching and the players that we bought so. and then we look at uh, you know the first season 80 was an improvement on 79 and 81 was kind of a breakthrough season for north and i remember as a young journalist covering uh you guys 1981 fourth round against St George, who were the who played in the previous semi-finals. It was 39-10, and that was I think three point tries at that time. It was a huge win over a team that was a very strong team. Do you remember that game, and did you play in it? Um, I, I can't say I do remember it. I, I hope I did play. But <laughs> I think Fred Arcoy was the one. Like you know, I, I was actually there as a, a young reporter, and I was I was supposed to do something else. And the fact that Norse were thrashing St George, it was like everyone couldn't believe it. Uh, Ron really had that effect on the team. I think it gave you gave yourself belief. Yeah, no, he did. He did that, and he and he gave us a bit of a pattern to play for play too. Where in previous years, under coaches like Noel Kelly and those sort of guys, there were never any pattern to play. Yeah, so we, we had a pattern to fall back on when we got into trouble and when we were going well, we had a pattern to stick to. So. And he's, he was a strict disciplinarian, I believe. I, I hear that he you know would throw tantrums at training to try and get you guys into line. <laughs> oh, he was, he was a forceful speaker, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he was, a, he was a good guy and a good coach, right? Yeah. And 1982, that was the year that a lot of people remember as the breakthrough, first semi-final appearance since 65, and you were a part of that. You were one of the veterans in the team. Mm. Tell us about what changed with that. You know, Mitchell Cox had been signed and he added a bit of pace and, and a spark, didn't he? Yeah, well, Mitchell Cox had come in and Mark Rain, we had Mark had just arrived and, uh, and, uh, and that helped all the established players. Johnny Gray had come back from Manly and so it, it, it sort of rounded the side out pretty well. Larry Kelly was playing well and when you look at Donny McKinnon was he was sort of coming into his his own. And yeah he'd really like he'd been in like lower grades hadn't he uh, you know obviously before he broke into the team in the 70s but it was in 82 where he really came of age wasn't it? Yeah yeah him and Steve Mayo sort of had a good combination we had two big bookends which was uh, yeah, but it helped us out greatly. So. And my old friend who grew up in the same street, Alan Burns, uh, obviously was a young player that made a big impact too with his pace and his handling. Yeah, no, Al was, he was a great player. He was very elusive and he was a good defender and he, yeah, he, he was a complete player. His only problem was he probably was a stone or two too light, but uh, yeah, played well above his weight. And that 1982 season, what, what stands out for you? I remember, you know, big crowds. And suddenly the crowds were back at North Sydney Oval, beating Manly, obviously lost to Manly in the semis. But um, yeah, talk about the atmosphere of that time. Yeah, no, well, well, that was it. We were getting good crowds and they were getting vocal crowds. And uh, because we were winning, it was, uh, you know, you, you get on a, on a bit of a, a run and a bit of a high and the, and the crowd sort of kept us going through that. So. And what did it mean to you having been through the hard years, you know, with the Bears, that suddenly you had a successful team? Yeah, no, it was, uh, well, I, that's all you want when you play football is to be successful. And it was, it was good that we were, you know, I was pleased that I was doing that with the Bears before I, uh, before I finished. So. And what about the semis? Because I think John Gray was injured for that the game against Man, if I remember correctly. There were some injuries, and of course, uh, that was a comfortable win for Manny. Then there was the game against East, and there was a kickable conversion that, that was missed, and I think you lost 12 10. Yes, yeah. And um, yeah, uh, well, when you, you lose your number one hooker and your goal kicker, it, it makes it difficult. And, but Phil Ritchie 
filled in and Phil was a very good coach. He was a very good player as well. So. He was good. He was good. What a dog howling here. Yeah. Probably a bit sad about yeah. that uh, semi yeah. uh, losses. But 83, everyone thought that would be a, a really good season as well. Uh, and uh, Ron Willie departed. With, and of course, Chow Hayes, who was an excellent coach, came in. Yeah. Uh, what do you look back on? What do you say about that? That that was your last season. So tell us about that transition from Ron Willie to Chow Hayes. Yeah, well, I think we just lost a little bit of momentum that year. And, um, but the players were the same, weren't they? They, they were, yeah. It was, it was the same playing group. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think yeah, maybe it was the Ron's influence that we lost, but or Chow just sort of taking the reins and it takes a little while to, to get organised. So. I think it was a lot of injuries too in that 83 season. Yeah, yeah, there were a lot. I, uh, I don't remember having. Well, I think I got. Uh, I lost more time through suspension than injury. But uh, you weren't known as a. Dirt, I mean, you were a physical player, but you weren't known as a dirty player. Did you get sent off in that '83 season? Uh, no, I didn't get sent off in that season. But uh, uh, I ended up getting, being sent off three times in the in, the, in my career. But all, they were all hit high tackles, which was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were a ferocious tackle. That was that was why you were known. You know, had your nickname, but. Talk, talk about your thinking about retiring at the end of 83, because the Norse had a you know mixed season, missed out on the semis, but obviously had some very really good good wins. Uh, you were still playing pretty well, um, and you were only what, uh, just, I think, not even turned 30, you're about to turn 31, about to turn 31, so you were 30, about to turn 31. Yeah, no, well, uh, and that was my mindset, was that when you turn 30, that's when you retire. And um, I still felt fine, and I ended up playing in the country for another, another six years, so. Right. So, so I wasn't quite ready to re wasn't ready to retire from football, but I, I'd made the decision it was probably time to get the kids out of Sydney and get back to the country. And, yeah. So. And looking back, do you are you glad you retired when you did? And are you you wish you would have stayed on for a year or two? Oh well, you yeah you always think you you probably should have stayed for a little bit longer, but now everything's worked out well for me and the and the. You know, I've, I've got a happy family now, and I don't know whether that would have been any different if I'd stayed. But uh, yeah, no, it, it all worked out well. How do you look back on your career? And of course, we should mention you played for New South Wales uh, in the 70s. You were quite young then, you were early in your career. Tell us about, you know, playing for New South Wales. Did you play alongside Artie Beetson and some of the Queenslanders who would eventually play Origin? Yeah, no, well, the, the team I played for, I, I, I played for against Great Britain, as a, but I was a reserve in that team. And that was a bit of a trial team because Ronnie Warner, uh, Ron Turner and um, uh, Bob McCarthy were playing props in the, in that game so it was a bit of an experimental team i think they threw in against the palms and they they put me in as a reserve but the the next year i got picked from canterbury to play for new south wales on the queensland tour and Artie beatson was in that side so. in the new south wales team was in the Artie beatson and ray higgs who were both sort of fairly <laughs> towards queensland and when the, the first game on the wednesday night they queensland beat us so is that right? Wow, yeah. wow. Uh, how do you look back on your career in general? You know, and you and you know the representative side playing as also. I guess you played for City as well. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, do you think you achieved what you wanted to achieve? Did you, did you overachieve? Um, yeah. Well, you I, I don't think anyone thinks they overachieved. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I'm sort of happy with the, the level I got to, and I don't think I could have gone any further. I, I actually did get picked to play for Australia. Um, when I was playing for Canterbury in 75, uh, we'd got knocked out of the semis and they'd taken the, a team of the balance of the teams out of Sydney and they picked a team to go to New Zealand. And someone got injured over there and they, they wanted me to go over and replace them. But I was in the middle of my ex engineering exams and I, I turned it down. So. Wow, so you were that close to playing for Australia? Yeah, well, I suppose in a, a uh, be Australia. <laughs> and you know, when, when you look at the Bears, their success in the 90s, you know, after, you know, obviously long after your career, uh, how proud were you that they were, you know, a consistent semi final team, big crowds, successful, well run, obviously winning reserve grade premierships, I think they won four. Mm. How'd you look back on that 90s period? Oh, you know, I was, I was, I looked back at, uh, I suppose, pride, you could say, that I, I had that had some contribution to that, I suppose. But uh, no, and then they played a great style of football and there was a lot of great North Sydney players and they're, and they're still great players now, so. And the sad demise in 99, how much was that a surprise to you? I, well, I, you know, I'm being sort of removed from it, I could see that North Sydney and Manly just weren't gonna to work together, so it was. No, I was very disappointed how they how they handled North Sydney being an establishment club and they, you know, they virtually threw them to the wolves, so. Yeah, it was very sad. You think they could have done things differently to survive? Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah. What would you have done differently? Well, I, I would have stood 
tried to establish and to maintain the bears rather than go to the Northern Eagles call and the North Sydney bears and uh, have Manly come in with North Sydney. But <laughs> yeah, well, I've been to a reunion a couple of years ago and, and North Sydney Oval and it's still a wonderful, you know, to see the you know, sort of second tier matches going on there and all the old, from your team, the 82 semi-final team, they were there. So it's good to see them continue in some form, isn't it? Oh yeah, and that was one of the good things about North Sydney. The, re the reunions are fairly heavily um, patronised and and, you, and they're mainly the guys that I played with, you know, that sort of the Donnie McKinnon and the Johnny Gray, Steve Mayo, all those sort of guys all get back, Freddie Teasdale, you know, and uh, it's just like you haven't been away, so. <laughs> and what about, you know, any chance do you think the Bears can come back? You know, you're here on the Gold Coast, uh, there's been talk, all talks of all sorts of ways of getting the Bears back, what do you think? Oh, well, I, I'd love to see them get back, but, uh, you know, history is sort of indicating that they're probably struggling to, to do that. Um, but with the, the way the uh, competition structured, they would have to get one of the franchises that are going bad and uh, take it over as a North Sydney franchise, so, which is not going to be an easy thing to do, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's sad, isn't it, really? Uh, I know that we're, we're all part of this group, the, the Den on, on Facebook, and you know, ex-players like yourself, big you know, media people like me and supporters, we're all, we all still love the Bears, don't we? Yeah, oh, that's right. Well, and that was... It was just the way, well, I don't know if it was the way we played, but it was just a very friendly club and, you know, there was camaraderie and, and you know, it's just one of those things we made friends for life and uh, and we like to stick with them. So. And I guess the fact that, you know, they, it became a successful club in the, the 90s, you know, consistently successful, no one could say it was a, you know, a losing team anymore, right? No, no, that's right. And that, that was the, the other part of it is that a very successful club that they, you know, virtually, um, you know, just got rid of, which is very sad. Who was the best player you played with and what's your happiest memory of playing with the Bears? You got something that stands out? Um, oh, not, one, not one thing, it was just, just sort of generally enjoyed being there and um, you know, well, there were, and there was a lot of good players, you know, Mark Graham and John Gray and Rossi Warner and you know, you could, you could just keep rattling them off. So let, yeah. let me put you on the spot, who's the best player in the 70s you played with in, in the Bears? Um, Mark Brown, I would have said. But he didn't join till the 80s, did he? Oh, no, sorry. In, yeah. the, in the 70s, um, yeah, it would have been Timmy Pickup. Timmy Pickup, yeah, he was terrific. And you say in the 80s, it would have been Mark Brown? Yeah, Mark and Donnie, and you know, you, you can, you can keep, <laughs> keep on going. But... What about at Canterbury? Who was the best player there that you played with? Apart from Paul, Tim Pickup went with you. Yeah, Tim, Pick Tim Pickup was there. Um, probably Gary Dowling. Gary Dowling, yeah, yeah. fullback, right? Yeah, no, he, Gary was a, was a great player, great fullback. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was sort of well. Uh, well, sort of not before his time, but he was a, one of the best hole runners I've ever seen. Very, very good blood work. So. You were pretty good at that too. You could run through a hole. Uh, that was one thing about you is uh, you were a complete player. You know, you could ha you could pass, you could run, you could tackle. You know, I think that were you, I guess, would, would you say you were proud of the, the versatility that you had? Yeah, I think that was, well, maybe that was a good thing and a bad thing because uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you're that versatile that you, you don't sort of get picked in any, they miss you out because you can play so many positions. What was your favourite position? <laughs> I used to like playing lock. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. That, what, because it gave you that kind of free roll? That's right, yeah. Well, I, I could sort of run around with the backs and uh, and then tackle in the forwards. So it was, uh, yeah, I had best of both worlds. <laughs> so what's the future hold for you, uh, Keith? <laughs> Do you have any, uh, I, you know, ambitions to work in in the game again or uh, you know here in the gold coast what are you are still active looking very fit yeah I'm, well, well I've, I've sort of lost touch with the game i suppose with the management and the administration of the game but um, i'm sort of more into engineering now so it's uh, i'm um, sort of concentrate on that and, and i suppose i'm just about to head into retirement as well so. do you cheer for the maroons or the blues <laughs> i still cheer for the blues yeah. <laughs> like me as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> well keith uh, it's such an, a pleasure to see you again and uh wonderful that uh you know you, you're well that you're fit and you have good memories of uh playing with the bears yeah thanks jason same here thanks for coming down and having a chat it's been good it's been a pleasure yeah.